Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central. We're coming to you with another Lightboard lesson video. And today we're going to do another one of the OWASP top 10 security risks out there. Uh, today is uh, risk number six on the list of the 10. And, uh, and uh, risk number six is called security misconfiguration. All right, so big, big words for, uh, for, the, for this latest one. All right, basically what this is, what this, uh, the, the, the fundamental problem uh, that exists with security misconfiguration is that you have a web application and it is comprised of several different things and there are default accounts, there are uh, you know standard things that come shipped with uh, various parts and pieces and you don't reconfigure those or you don't configure your web application properly. So let me just draw a little uh, little example here. So let's say you've got your world-class web application here and it is comprised of a lot of different stuff. So I'm just going to draw kind of this, uh, this box that represents your web application. Let's say you have a web server um, that is part of this, of course, right? Uh, let's say you have a database. I'll put DB uh, server. Alrighty, let's say you have maybe some kind of authentication uh, capabilities. Um, so the point is you've got a web application, you've got a lot of different parts and pieces that comprise this web application. All right, so let's say on your web server, uh, you have chosen to deploy the Apache web server. So Apache here, Apache, all righty, uh, which is a very common web server, all right. Um, the Apache uh, web servers, and, and granted there are many versions and all that kind of stuff, uh, Apache, I, I went and looked earlier today, and it has over 200 known vulnerabilities, depending on the version and all that, but if you look at Apache in general, there are over 200 known vulnerabilities with Apache web servers. Uh, let's say you have uh, Oracle, for example, uh, for your database server. Alrighty, There are like 50 some, some odd Oracle known vulnerabilities. Uh, authentication, maybe using SAML or OAuth or whatever, there are known vulnerabilities with all of those things. So. The point is that whenever you build your web application and you build it with these parts and pieces, then whatever you have chosen to use to build this whole thing, you need to understand there are, there are vulnerabilities right out of the box with these, uh, with these different um, you know, features or with this, with this different software. Uh, okay, some of the things that could happen uh, in terms of security misconfiguration is maybe you have some unnecessary features enabled on your web application. So again, let's go back to the web server, for example, Apache, you, you deploy it right out of the box. Maybe it's got some features that just, it comes you know, default configured, uh, but you don't need that for your web application. So it is a good idea to go through and say, hey, what do I actually need and what do I not need? And if you don't need it, then it is a good idea to turn it off, to delete it, whatever it is. So don't use what you don't need uh, because think of it as, hey, if I have something enabled, then that is a potential uh, risk, that is a potential door to allow the bad guys to get in. So if I don't need it, then I need to turn it off. Um, default accounts would fall underneath that. So like an admin account, let's say with, uh, you know, with a certain um, server that it comes with you know, admin and the password is admin and everybody on the internet knows that. So if you don't change that admin account and, or certainly the password, then you open yourself up. Um, there are some error handling things that may happen where let's say that a user comes to access your web application and they get some kind of an error page and the way that you handle those errors, uh, let's say that you give them back a page that says, hey, I'm sorry, you have reached a page that doesn't exist or whatever, um, but as a, as a part of that error page that you present back to the, to the uh, user, maybe you list, hey, by the way, I'm using Apache version, blah, 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 or I'm using Oracle, you know, this came from a database, uh, Oracle database, it's version this, and then that gives an attacker, a would-be attacker, the exact, uh, you know, type of software that you have used to build this web application, and then they don't even have to guess anymore what kind of web server you have. Now they know the, the type and the version and all that stuff, and then they can say, hey, tell me the vulnerabilities on that specific one. All right, so, so as you handle errors or error pages in your web application, you need to make sure that you don't overshare information. Um, there are security features that come uh, you know, naturally with these different uh, servers or code or whatever. And let's say Apache releases an update, then you need to make sure that you put that update on your web application. Uh, so all the latest security patches and features need to be enabled. So again, don't, don't just use the default. 
Um, another one that, uh, that is problematic is whenever your web server uh, responds back to a client, um, maybe it does not send any kind of a uh, uh, security header um, you know, on the HTTP response back to the client. Uh, so there are these security headers that you can use in an HTTP response, and you should use those. Uh, so those are, those are some things that, in terms of configuration of the web application itself, those are things that you need to, uh, to keep in mind. Um, one thing that can help with this is an automated scanning capability. So like a, uh, like a DAST tool, I could come in and check, you know, hey, do you have default accounts set up? Do you have the latest uh, patches? On your uh, on your different servers or, or your web application in general, uh, so a uh, you know a, an automated uh, testing tool is a good thing to use. Um, alrighty, so those are some of the problem areas that could happen with security misconfiguration. Uh, some things that that I'll list in terms of how to help with this is I'm going to say uh, repeatable repeatable processes repeatable process, and I'll just put that. All right, and, and what I mean by that is uh, you need a, a hardening process. Uh, I didn't want to write that all up there, but you need a repeatable hardening process that will say, hey, how do I harden my web application from all the things that we've already talked about, you know, the default passwords, the security, or the, uh, the error handling, all those different things. Um, I need, to, I need to figure out a process that will harden this down and it needs to be repeatable. It needs to be uh, easy to, 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 to do, to automate that kind of thing. Our automation would be uh, nice to, to be able to do. Um, so you need to be able to run this process against your web application um, and do it repeatedly. Alrighty. Uh, another one is all servers, I'll say um, all servers uh, need to have uh, uh, let's say um, same config. All right, and what, what I mean by that is you have your, uh, maybe you have your uh, development server that you're developing all this stuff in. Then you have like a QA or like a test server that you want to test everything in. And then you have your production server that, that's facing the internet. All of these servers from, from a uh, security configuration perspective need to have the exact same configuration. That way, when you run these repeatable processes, these, uh, these hardening actions against them, then all of these servers need to look exactly the same from a, con from a security configuration perspective. Alrighty, um, I'll say minimal, minimal platform and I'll just, I'll just say minimal platform for now. Uh, this goes back to what I talked about a second ago. If you don't need the feature or the capability that is shipped out of the box with this thing, then you need to turn it off. So your web application needs to do exactly what it needs to do, but it doesn't need to do any more than that. So have a minimal platform um, you know, footprint, as it were, uh, as you build out your web application. Um, I'm gonna say uh, security, Security headers or security directives is what I'll put. Directives. Alrighty. Security directives, and this goes back to what I was said uh, earlier, that if a client accesses your web application, then you can go back and use different security headers, for example. I'll put a couple of them up here. HSTS is one that you can include. Um, HPKP is one. Uh, let's see, there's a uh, X frame. Options one. There's a bunch of these, bunch of security headers um, that you could use. But those are a few examples. Um, but you need to take advantage of those. That hey, when you when you send the response back, then you're using those uh, security directives. Um, okay. So those are just a few of the ways that you can harden or configure your security uh, on your web application and not have security misconfiguration. Um, all right, so again, the overall idea here is that you are going to use different parts and pieces, different code to build out your web application, and you need to understand that there are vulnerabilities inherently uh, you know, tied to those parts and pieces of code, uh, and even if you write it yourself. I mean, there's, there's going to be some security issues. Um, all right, so you can do some of these things. There are other, uh, other, other ways to help harden or, uh, or help with the security of your web application, like with the web application firewall. That's, uh, that's another thing that you could implement uh, to help with some of these things. Um, but nonetheless, 
uh, it's a uh, it can be a dangerous world out there in the uh, in the internet with your web application. So uh, so make sure that you configure your web application securely. Uh, repeatedly check that, harden it uh, as much as you can, and only use exactly what you need to use and nothing more. So thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video today. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we will see you guys out there in the community.